The crime story worthy of Hitchcock. The suspect in the case was after money, and he thought he knew how to get it out of a certain rich man. The crux of his plan was to go after the rich man's teenage daughter, not to physically harm her or even to kidnap her, but to threaten her life in an unusually diabolical way, to make her family so afraid they wouldn't even call police. Here is ABC's Ryan Owen. It's now Wednesday morning in Australia, and this young heiress is finally breathing a sigh of relief. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's him. I think we've got him, so. Yeah, no, no, she's feeling, we're feeling good. No doubt. We're feeling very so. good. 18 year old Madeline Pulver believes Australian authorities have found the man who broke into her home and strapped what she thought was a collar bomb to her neck. Remarkably, the arrest went down almost 10,000 miles away in Louisville, Kentucky. Investigators collared and charged this Australian businessman, 50-year-old Paul Doug Peters. They arrested the father of three here at his ex-wife's house, one of his daughters the same age as Madeline. On behalf of Maddie and the entire family, we are enormously relieved that an arrest has been made in the United States. Maddie's agonizing ordeal began August 3rd. She was home alone in this wealthy suburb of Sydney that afternoon, studying for an exam. Around 2.15, a masked man entered her room carrying a baseball bat. According to just released court documents, the intruder told Maddie, sit down and no one needs to get hurt. He had a black box with him and forced the box against her throat and looped a device similar to a bike chain around her neck. He also attached a document to the contraption. He then instructed her to count to 200, and he then left the room. After a few minutes, Maddie yelled out for the man but heard nothing. Terrified, she texted her mother to call police. At that time, she read a portion of the document, saw the word explosive, and immediately assumed that the man had placed a bomb around her neck. For nearly 10 excruciating hours, that black box was strapped to her neck until authorities were able to x-ray it and determine there was no explosive. These past two weeks have been a very difficult time for us and we are hopeful that this development marks the beginning of the end of this traumatic ordeal for our family. Maddie's father is one of the wealthiest men in Australia and police say the note Peter's attached to the box was an attempt to extort money. If this all sounds like a novel, well, there might be a good reason for that. Peters allegedly signed the letter Dirk Strawn, an apparent reference to a character in the book Taipan, written by Australian novelist James Clavell. The plot? All about one businessman trying to destroy another. People get ideas uh, to commit crimes or violent acts based on what they've read, what they've heard, and so it does not surprise me that he may have been motivated or given maybe even specific ideas or details about how to do this based on possibly a novel. While prosecutors aren't sure yet if the two men ever crossed paths, they do know Peters once worked for a company with connections to the Pulver family. And while Pulver's business ventures soared, Peters collapsed during the economic crisis of 2008. There are some links uh, between the two, uh, between the suspect and the family, however, um, no direct links and, and that's still a matter of investigation. But law enforcement experts say it may well provide a motive. Mr. Peters may feel that he was wronged at some point and to the point where he believed that certain amounts of money were owed to him and it's Madeline's father's fault. Authorities say he did not cover his tracks well. That ransom note around Maddie's neck contained an email address where she was supposed to go for further instructions. Police say Peters signed on to that email at a nearby library. What's more, they say his credit card was used to buy the components of that fake bomb and then to purchase a one-way ticket to the United States. His lawyer says he intends to fight the charges in Australia, but today, Peter said little more than this. Sir, is there anything you want to say to the Pulver family? Any words for Madeline? I hope she's well. For now, one Australian businessman is behind bars, accused of trying to extort another in an international drama that reads like a crime novel and may have just been inspired by one. I'm Ryan Owens for Nightline in Los Angeles.